How you doing? <laughs> Just thought I'd whistle a theme to Star Trek. What the hey? Yeah, I got these medallions here. Anybody want these medallions? Uh, send me 10 bucks. <laughs> Please send me ten dollars and I'll send you a medallion. How you guys doing? Welcome to traveling, traveling with Bruce. It's the eight o'clock prime time show. Travel trivia. We're doing trivia tonight. It's the trivia show. Look out! Get ready. No cheating. Oh, I got some doozies for you guys tonight. Uh, you're never gonna get them. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Welcome back. Uh, we had that five o'clock show already, and. Uh, we had a good time. I kind of left some people hanging there. I may have ended the show a little too early for some. Um, we were talking about upgrades, and uh, and uh, that the topic was kind of catching, and I thought I'd mention it again. Uh, any of you guys ever get an upgrade on a, a flight or an upgrade uh, on a cruise ship? I, I think I had one story in there that came in at the end there. Um, a surprise upgrade or a, a deal that you just couldn't pass up. Uh, have any of you ever bump, been bumped from an airline and you got a real good upgrade offer or uh, you got a compensation offer with an upgrade, anything like that? I'd like to know. Uh, I, I told one story earlier, right at the end of the show uh, the, today, about my uh, upgrade that my wife and I received when we were in uh, London, in the London Heathrow, flying British Airways back to Canada. We had just lived, driven, uh, flown from Berlin to London, and then we we're going to fly from London to Calgary. And... Uh, Halfway through the gate, like you know, as you're going from the plane to the departure terminal, which I think is departure terminal four, beautiful, beautiful departure terminal in uh, Heathrow for international flights. We were uh, supposed to go up to that terminal and you have to go through sort of a check-in thing before you can get there and you have to have a boarding pass to prove that you can go there. And sure enough, we, we got in line and then got called up and handed our passport and boarding passes to this uh, uh, middle-aged lady about 40 odd years of age very very attractive too i might say and she knew her stuff she really knew her stuff everybody's we're all very very happy my wife and i are just thrilled we were having we had a great time in berlin met with our daughter again we're flying home and um we were i handed her my the documentation and my wife and i were kind of looking around with all the activity going on and um we had about an hour and a half to kill before our flight so we had lots of time no problem and uh, the the gal was Whatever she was doing in front of the terminal, she was doing it. And uh, I noticed out of the corner of my eye, I could see her ripping up our boarding passes and just chucking them in the garbage. And then uh, two new boarding passes were coming out of her printer. Said nothing, said nothing. And uh, she looked at them and she put them into our passports. Just handed, them, just handed me the whole package. Said, here you go. You're all good to go. Have a nice flight. Oh, thank you very much. And so um, off we went. And uh, about a half an hour later, I took a real close look at those boarding passes. <laughs> I was wondering why would she reprint them? And uh, well, the seat numbers were changed from uh, row 33 or 34 uh, on the 767 at the back because we were in economy at the back. Uh, row 12, uh, yeah, rows, uh, seats uh, C and D, row 12. So I thought, well, that's interesting. So I uh, looked at uh, seatguru.com, your, your source for finding out your seating plan on an airplane, any airline, any aircraft. So I found the British Airways site looked up to 767 and took a look at our uh, seats and found that we were in the last row, premium economy. Beautiful. And uh, we got the upgraded uh, meal. We had like a you know, couple of choices now. <laughs> we had uh, the headphones with the nice soft uh, ear surrounding your ears instead of those little chintzy ones that are about the size of a quarter and they kind of make your ears sore after a while. These just go right on the side of your head. And of course, the seat had the more recline in it, and it had the footrest that came out, which is for my, you know, for Jennifer, the Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife that I've got. Oh, she loved that. Uh, could put her feet on those. She's a bit shorter than I am. Uh, more seat room between us. Only two in our in the middle. Two on the window. Two in the window. Oh, I loved it. And I got a peek through the curtain just behind us. There was a little break in the curtain. I could kind of look back in steerage behind us. Oh, it's not fun. <laughs> I know it's not fun. And here we are on a, what, a, how many hours? Uh, eight hours, nine hours uh, flying back. Uh, takes longer to get home because you're against the wind. Oh, but, oh, it was a glorious flight. We loved it. And, of course, we had the seat back television with more selection and primo. So that was a lovely upgrade. Couldn't thank her. Couldn't thank the lady for that because by the time I figured it out, we had gone through another security check. 
and there was no way to get back to thank her for that. And so uh, we got this upgrade, probably four hundred dollar upgrade, and uh, just handed to us without any fanfare whatsoever. I love that, and I say thank you so much. The only other time I can tell you about an upgrade was when my uh, my wife and daughter and I were flying from uh, Miami to uh, New York. Uh, we were on a, an extended uh, holiday. Um, and uh, this particular leg of this holiday, this trip, happened to be from Miami to New York on, I think, American Airlines. And in those days, this is like 1999. And in those days, um, American Airlines was affiliated with uh, a number of other airlines. And one of them was an airline that I used to frequent in Canada all the time called Canadian Airlines International, which before that used to be called CP Air. And... Um, uh, they had at Canadian Airlines, uh, I used to get a lot of bonus miles whenever I flew on business, and I did a lot of business flying in those days. So I had racked up a bunch of points, and I had these coupons, these upgrade coupons, and uh, each one was like 10,000 points, 20,000, whatever it was. And I always had them with me, but I, I never used them. Well, I went up to the ticket agent, uh, and I actually went up to the, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, agent at the gate, because uh, we were there about an hour before the flight. And I came up to her and I said, look, I have these uh, coupons here. I've got, we got economy seats, but I have these coupons. Are any of these, can any of these be used on this flight to New York? Uh, that's my wife and my daughter and I. So she, she'd look at my pa uh, my boarding passes and um, she looked at the coupons and, the, and then she said, well, let me, let me just talk to my manager. She got on the phone and then she came back. She said, uh, uh, just leave this with me and uh, just kind of stay right over here, just off to the side. And uh, I'll, see, I'll see what we can do. Okay, great. Yeah, no problem. You know, I had no expectations. Uh, about oh, 10 minutes later, she calls me over and she says, okay, she says, I got three boarding passes for you. We're in first class. We're in first class. Ooh, nice. So I um, went back to my wife and daughter and, and I said, I got us a little upgrade. It looks like we're going to be flying first class to New York. Not bad. So in those days, uh, in 1998, 99, First class is what now, um, uh, a glo well, even now, a business class is nicer than what first, first class used to be because business class now has a, a lay down bed and, you know, much more, much more amenities. But anyway, first class, nice white seats, big recline, and, uh, and of course, the best food and, you know, just service. Well, my daughter had never been in first class before. She was uh, nine or 10 years old. This is cool, Dad. This this is really cool. <laughs> so behind me, my wife and daughter sat in two seats, two seats beside each other. And I was in front of them in my own. And then uh, the thing that my daughter loved the most was the fact that they had the uh, the chocolate chip cookies, the heated chocolate chip cookies on a little tray. And the uh, flight attendant would come by and say, "Would you like one of these for dessert?" And so uh, my daughter had one for herself, and my mother, or her mother, my wife. Jennifer Aniston gave her one. <laughs> and then uh, uh, about, oh, 15 minutes later, the, the uh, stewards came around with about four or five more cookies. And nobody else wanted any, uh, but came to my daughter. Would you like another? Oh, yes, I would. So she had these melting, melting chocolate chip cookies. Oh, she thought that was now this. This is first class. This is, this is what first class is all. Forget the seat. Forget that, all the room, man, forget that, because she's tiny. She's got all the room in the world anyway. But heated chocolate chip cookies on an airplane. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty nice stuff. So that went very well. That was my, uh, my two little excursions about moving up the, uh, up the ladder on, on, uh, on an airplane. Uh, let's say hi to some people here. Iskew Park, hi again, Bruce. It's uh, Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's cooling off this evening. Uh, sets in. It's only minus three, but the weatherman says plus five tomorrow. That's about, uh, that's going to be about 41 degrees in Thunder Bay. That's pretty good up there. Richard Kornmaski, hello, Bruce, for the second time. Hey, Richard, Scott Batchley. Hi, Bruce, back again. Still nice in Ventura. Randy Lucas, uh, round two. Here we go. Uh, Tammy Ray, good evening, everyone. Bob Hollis, hi, Bruce, and everyone. 75 in Atlanta, it's starting to storm. Scott Batchley, I've gotten upgrades in the old days, nothing of late. Uh, my first cruise to Alaska way back when when uh, started with an inside and by the time the cruise left was upgraded to a nice balcony no extra charge pretty nice that's all right thank you very much that would be all right debbie Emanuel, hi everyone hi debbie uh, jim thomas uh, saying hi everyone yay round two and tammy ray i have to go uh, back and watch round one after the show <laughs> <laughs> and norman duarte hello to all yeah norm uh, no, uh, nor first show 
uh, Tammy, just to give you a highlight. I talked about uh, talked about a poll that was done about uh, toilets backing up on cruise ships, and, and then we got into the seaside. You know, where where else would you go? You know, natural progression, right? And we talked all about that and covered a few things there. Um, yeah, for those of you who are new, who've never been here before, hopefully there are a few of you. Uh, my regulars are signing in and saying hi to me. They're telling me where they are, what their high temperature was today. I'm in Creston, British Columbia, three miles north of the uh, the Idaho border. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, two hours, 15 minutes from my front door to the Costco parking lot in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And I'm heading there this Saturday. I'm, I'm on a road trip this Saturday after I do my Saturday show. Um, and so uh, with America so close, uh, it's handy for us here in Creston. Uh, most of us, when we want to buy gas for our car, we cross the border. <laughs> Get our passports. It's across the border. And uh, if we head uh, about 20 miles south or 15 miles south, we end up in uh, Bonner's Ferry. And uh, if gas is... Uh, 265 in Bonner's Ferry, it's 245 in Coeur d'Alene. So if you only drive 20 odd miles, you can get gas for 265 compared to five bucks a gallon here. Five bucks a gallon here in good old Canada. Um, but if we go an extra couple hours down to Coeur d'Alene, make a kind of a little day of it, do a bigger grocery run, shopping run, we can save an extra 20 cents a gallon down there. So the strategy is get to Coeur d'Alene when the reserve light's just about to come on, <laughs> pull into Costco. Fill her up, and uh, you know we're saving. I'm personally saving twenty five dollars on a tank of gas. Twenty five dollars I'm saving on a tank of gas, unbelievable. And that buys a bunch of groceries at Costco. And uh, with a dollar fifty hot dog, uh, my wife's happy. Chicken bake, I'm happy. And if we have a little room, we'll, we'll grab a uh, grab a yogurt with that very very Sunday. Pretty good. We love that. Uh, so that's our plan coming up. Uh, that's where I'm located. Uh, this channel, Traveling with Bruce, it's all about traveling. We talk about uh, traveling, uh, mainly uh, cruise ships, but I also love talking about airlines, airports, uh, around the world travel. Uh, if you're a new uh, cruiser, if you're, you're thinking of going on a cruise for the very first time, or you haven't been on a cruise in like 10, 15 years, man, you're out of touch because have things ever changed? Oh my gosh, things have really changed in the cruise business lately. So uh, any of you who are looking for any kind of uh, advice or you've got questions about a cruise or how to find a deal or, or what can you pack, what can't you pack, can you bring booze on a cruise, what's a drink package all about, what is the specialty dining all about, you let us know. Uh, if I can't answer a question that you've got about going on a cruise or on a holiday, my gang here who's been signing in all during the show, they'll, they'll know the answer. And uh, we'll figure it out for you. So we'll help you, we'll help you get through the, uh, you know, the, the learning curve of uh, getting on a cruise. Um, I was just reading stats the other day. 27 million people will take a cruise this year. 30 million next year will take a cruise. 30 million, two and a half a million a month uh, are going to be on a cruise ship next year. Unbelievable stats. Uh, the business is just really booming. And uh, it employs hundreds of thousands of people around the world, probably millions by now. Just an amazing, an amazing thing. Uh, the channel, uh, this channel here i started seven months ago uh we're now at uh, 1494 subscribers uh we were at uh 225 on january the 17th and on january the 17th i know that date it's infamy for us in youtube land uh those of us who did not have a thousand subscribers on the 17th of january found out from google surprise uh you're monetized right now uh, because you had 10,000 views our old rules old rules are out we've got new rules and uh, as of right now, you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours of watch time on all your videos on your channel to be big enough for us to consider you monetizable so that if we run ads on your commercial, you'll get some of that money. Uh, Bruce, uh, your channel at 275 subscribers and 3,500 hours of watch time, too small. You've got 30 days uh, till Feb 20 to make the mark on both of those targets. If you make it, you're going to be uh, qualified for monetization. So uh, the, the, the word went out. I, I knew the uh, watch time wouldn't be a problem. We had that a week later. Uh, but uh, my subscribers and my viewers stepped up and started subscribing to this channel big time. I was pleading every day for anyone, please subscribe. And uh, Feb 19th, the day before, we broke 1,000. <laughs> we did a uh, we did a subscribe-a-thon. It turned into a it was a live stream that turned into a subscribe a thought. My viewers wouldn't let me go off the air until I hit a thousand subs. We did it on the air. It took about two hours, but we did it. 
And then I had a long sleep. Uh, now we're we're hitting 1,500. We're just about to hit 1,500 subscribers. Uh, but on the 20th of uh, February, because I didn't have 1,000 subscribers on the 17th of March, my channel became demonetized. So I don't get paid by YouTube to do any commercials at this time. I'm in a review status, which is one level up from not having 1,000 subscribers at all. And I thought that it would take, uh, at least YouTube kind of indicated to me, it would take about a week for us to be re-monetized. This is week five, and we're still not back. So we're still unmonetized, and I am, uh, I am uh, doing all this work uh, for nada as far as YouTube advertising is concerned. There are uh, three ways that I generate income now from doing what I do. One is Patreon. I have a Patreon site where a few folks have gone there and have pledged three dollars a month, which, which is all I ask for, ten cents a day. Uh, and so, folks are giving me ten cents a day through Patreon on a three dollar a month pledge. Uh, the you know, the logo is on the top corner of my channel. And then I have a PayPal uh, logo on the home on my home page, my channel page. It's a donate button. You can go there and make a donation to my cause if you like. And then the only other form of income is from live streams right here with folks like yourselves who are kind enough and generous enough uh, to uh, send me a couple of dollars in my little tip jar there's a dollar sign near the uh, area where you're typing uh, to send me a message say hi if you click on the dollar sign the super chat feature comes up and uh, you can send me uh, whatever you wish uh, through through youtube system the super chat system and i say thank you very much for any and all donations and um any donation i get that is ten dollars or more uh, in U.S. dollars. Uh, I give you a gift, and my appreciation, a sign of appreciation for me, is I'll give you a gift of a sports medallion right here, or I'll give you a gift of a necklace. Uh, this is just a sampling of some of the necklaces. I have gold chains with uh, medallions, pin pendants attached. I have uh, NFL teams, uh, NHL baseball teams, MLB, NBA, and some colleges available uh, on the necklaces as well. So if you're interested in anything like that, uh, just send me a $10 donation and or more. Send me 20, I'll send you two. Um, and I will thank you very much, uh, very much so. And that includes shipping. I'll send it to you free of charge from here and it'll be in the mail and you'll have it in a few days. So there you go, there's my commercial for the day. Uh, tonight is prime time uh, traveling with Bruce and that means trivia. I'm gonna take a quick peek at my, any other messages that have come in since I started my little uh, commercial there. Um, let's talk about, uh, Tammy Ray is uh, talking about going back. Oh, Marliana is here. Marliana Ani is here. Hi from Aurora, Colorado. She says it's snowing right now. Kelly is here. Kelly Stanovich is uh, saying, hi guys, dreary and raining in Ohio. Leaving a week from Friday on the Rhapsody of the Seas. I missed you at five. We'll watch it later. And, uh, it's all good. <laughs> Leaving in a week from Friday tomorrow on a cruise giddy up that's going to be great fantastic kelly richard uh, kornamaski is also back uh, with all those tar sands gas is cheaper in the u.s than the strong u.s dollar what gifts <laughs> yeah well in canada we have something called uh, national health care uh, where everyone is covered uh, no matter what um and you can freely move between provinces and jobs and not worry about your health care as a matter of fact your employer almost always has nothing to do with your health care whatsoever. It's all covered by the government. So, uh, uh, you know, someone's paying for it. Well, we're paying for it, but we're paying for it in a collective way. So the more you drive, the more gas you burn, the more taxes you're paying. Uh, and if you're driving a big old V8 uh, pickup truck with all the bells and whistles and you're burning it up and you're only getting 15 miles to the gallon, you're paying. I'm driving a Hyundai Sonata and I'm getting 40 miles to the gallon on that guy. And I, I burn a lot less, but I still have the opportunity to head over here <laughs> to, uh, to America. <laughs> I get my guess there. So that's how this game works. But uh, yep, that's the deal up here. So at the farmer, oh, no, only cruising, laughing out loud. <laughs> Wes Morrison, wow, I complain about our 226 a gallon here in New Bronzeville. Oh, you got a bargain there, buddy. You, you adjust that for inflation. You go back to like 1980. Uh, and adjust that for like you're paying like a buck a gallon, like that's nothing, yeah, that's cheap. Uh, plus, with the efficiency of vehicles today, oh my gosh, you're getting a great deal. 
But uh, I, I remember uh, watching um, uh, Die Hard, the movie Die Hard with Bruce Willis. There's a scene in the movie where the cop is in the 7-Eleven getting those Twinkies. And he's saying it's for his wife. And the guy behind the counter is going, yeah, yeah, right, sure. Anyway, he gets the call from the cop shop to uh, check out the Nakatomi Plaza. You know, So he goes outside the 7-Eleven and he looks down the street at the Nakatomi Plaza, a couple blocks down. But just off to the side, you know, next time you watch the movie, he's right by a gas station. And there's, a, there's a, a sign telling you how much gas is. Wait till you see the price of gas when that movie was made back in the 80s. You're just going to go, oh, my God. What were we complaining about? <laughs> Sheep. Richard Kormaski, I miss the refineries when we live. I miss the refineries when we lived in Houston. Yeah, you miss them. <laughs> Gosh, Debbie Manuel, do they charge you fees for Patreon? Um, very little. It's like five percent. I get ninety-five percent of Patreon money. So if you're if you're if you're making a donation of three dollars a month on Patreon on your credit card or whatever you're doing, I get like two dollars and eighty-five cents of that. It's quite good. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you're making a donation of uh, $3 on the uh, Super Chat here, uh, YouTube takes 30%. So I, I only get 70% of that. If you're making a donation to my PayPal account, which is on my homepage, I get 95% of that too. So I get way more of the dough uh, on those. But it's very convenient to just hit the Super Chat. It just do. Um, it's, up to, it's up to each individual to decide. Bob Hollis, Bob, is your gallon an imperial gallon, five quarts? Uh, it's an imperial gallon. Um, I'll tell you, we sell gas here by the liter. Okay, now 3.7 liters equals a U.S. gallon. That much we do know. It's like 3.7 something liters. So three and three quarter liters. And uh, my liter here is 125. <laughs> so multiply that by 3.7. Uh, so roughly four. That's five dollars Canadian. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're just getting killed. Uh, a liter of gas for me in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, is around 80 cents Canadian, something like that. I'm saving 45 cents a liter uh, to head down there. It's huge. It's The difference is massive for us. It, it really counts. And I've got just a tiny car. I just got a Sonata. A Sonata. If I'm driving one of these pickup trucks with a 80-gallon uh, tank, <laughs> you know, dual tanks, oh, man. How about an RV? Oh, man, an RV. Canadian RVers. Who live here right here, we cross the border like on an eighth of a tank we don't we don't go in the united states with a full tank of gas we're not that stupid we're, no way we we buy it. um randy lucas gas was 245 per gallon today by the end of 2019 u.s californians us californians will be paying 76.6 cents per gallon for state and federal taxes i think i'm really pissed off right now <laughs> yeah i used to live in palm desert and gas uh I check it from time to time. It's always higher uh, in California than, say, in Phoenix. Uh, each state has its own, you know, thing. But then again, you count the number of miles uh, of highway in California versus the number of miles of highway in Phoenix, in, in, in Arizona. You can't compare. Uh, California has so much more highway to look after. 30-plus million people. It's unbelievable. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, one way to cut your gas bill is drive a more fuel-efficient car uh, or truck. Just be more, just be more miserly. Up here in Canada, the best selling, one of the best selling pickup trucks, because there's pickup trucks everywhere up here. One of the best selling pickup trucks is the Dodge uh, Ram uh, diesel uh, pickup truck. Uh, my cousin has one of those. He's getting 35 to 40 miles a gallon on that thing on the uh, highway and 30 miles in the city on a pickup truck. <laughs> and he's got all the torque in the world. He loves that thing. He just loves it. He had before that a Ford and before that another Ford. He went from about 12 miles a gallon to 16. Then he had a Ford getting him about 20, 22 miles a gallon. He's really happy with that one. And now he's into this uh, this uh, Ram diesel. He won't go back. Oh, yeah. He won't go back. He loves it. Scott Batchley. I remember we complained that gas went up to 25 cents a gallon. <laughs> Scott Batchley, yeah. Kelly Sionovich, my hubby remembers gas at 25 cents. It kills me. I remember the cheapest gas I remember as a, as a, a paying customer. I was about uh, 18 years old, 17 years old. I was just driving. And uh, I was buying gas for a VW Bug. I was driving. 62 and a half cents a gallon or 62.9 cents a gallon Canadian. In 1976, that was the price of gas where I lived in Ontario. And um, 
I remember in 1980, there was a federal election, a federal election, and um, we had just voted in a conservative government, first time in 15 years that the liberal government had been knocked out, the Trudeau government, the father, Trudeau the father, because right now the son is the president, prime minister. So the elder was defeated uh, and he was in a minority situation. So he had a lot of seats, but the conservatives had a few more, but they didn't have an outright majority because there are three parties up here. So the third party had the balance of power. Anyway, uh, the, the so-called conservatives or the Tories, as we call them, the Tories were in power for about a year and they had to come up with a budget. They had to bring up a budget and boy, times were tough in 1980. Uh, you guys had a recession with Jimmy Carter uh, and you reelected Ronnie Reagan and we had a recession up here and the Tories, of course, were blamed for it, even though for 15 years, the liberals have been in government. They'd spent all the money. <laughs> we had a real mess at the time. Anyway, interest rates were up to 18%. It was, you remember those days. Uh, those of you old enough will know. Anyway, the Tories announced a, a, a budget, and the, the budget called for a gasoline tax of $0.08. Cents. They would raise tax, the gas tax, by $0.08 cents a gallon. A gallon. That's a liter. It's only like one and a half cents a liter. Well, right now I'm paying one twenty five. What's one and a half cents more? $0.08 cents a gallon among other provisions that they came up with. And the liberals went after them. Oh, you're killing middle-class Canadians and poor families and, oh, you buggers. Well, they got defeated. <laughs> the budget went for the vote in Parliament and the um, the uh, liberals voted against it and a couple of the other uh, third-party guys voted against it. The government was defeated on a um, confidence motion. So in Canada, that means election now, snap election. 30 days, you got to have an election. So to the polls, we go back to the polls, and the liberals got back in, got back in again. And so we had 19 years out of 20, the liberal government, and they raised taxes even more. <laughs> Eight cents a gallon? We should have taken that deal. Voters fell for it every time. They fell for the old line, vote for me, I'll cut your taxes. They fell for it. Liberals lied to them because they couldn't cut taxes. They were in a deficit situation that was just out of control. And so they put in price controls and high taxes, and everyone was pissed off. <laughs> After the 84 election, the liberals got defeated big time. But uh, we had to wait four more years. But uh, that was that was a whole other world. Gasoline is a hot topic around these parts, let me tell you. Kelly, my hubby remembers 25 cents. Jim Thomas, amen. Randy, Bob Hollis, I remember 19.9 .9 cents a gallon in the late 60s. Richard Gormaski, I remember we bought gas for like 18 cents and they gave you a free pack of gum. Bob Hollis got a tin of chips or pretzels with a fill-up. I remember he used to get a pack of hockey cards. Like you get one, you know, little packs of two or three cards in them. Oh, those are great. Wendy Thompson, yeah, that's one, our pension. Uh, that's our pension. Hubby did 32 years at Chrysler. I did 17 years at the 17 years at the minivan plant. Glad your family loves his ramp. There you go. See, uh, Samantha Farmer, just uh, just live on a cruise ship. No gas, no car. <laughs> <laughs> Steaming Bean, Joe Clark, Joe who, that's who. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Joe Clark became prime minister for one year. Uh, Richard Kormaski, Samantha, when you get the details worked out, you should do a YouTube on the details of life cruising. Would love to join in. Steaming Bean, uh, Crosby was finance minister. That's right, from Newfoundland. Uh, Richard, she says, Richard, I will do. Then uh, DJ Rod 34, just a quick update on my complaint email to MSC about the seaside got a reply today and received an apology about all my issues promised to deal with them and gave me a 10% off next cruise <laughs> not much <coughs> oh yeah sorry for the complete and total inconvenience and all the nightmare issues you said here's 10% off our next cruise <laughs> oh, yeah so at the farmer trying to get Bruce to join and do his live stream on the ship. Oh my goodness. Twin video production. Hello everyone. Hello twin video production. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the uh welcome to the stream. Uh steaming bean SO hockey cards. That's right. The old SO hockey cards from those old days. Uh Michelle Lucas Randy's attitude will change on Sunday. One month cruise to France, baby. Yes, we're going to France. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Going to be awesome. Fantastic stuff. Oh, you got to love it. The old days and uh, the gas stations and oh my gosh. Um, it's funny how things today, certain things today are cheaper in real terms than they used to be way back when. And other things have just gone, you know, kind of silly. 
Um, one thing that's cheaper is airfares. If you compare airfares in the 50s and the 60s to what airfares are today, way, way cheaper, uh, inflation adjusted. But uh, cruise ships, you know, cruise ship uh, deals, it, even with all the add-ons and all the add-on charges, you take a, you take a, uh, a Royal Caribbean cruise or, or Norwegian cruise, uh, balcony room, there was no such thing as a balcony room in 1955, 65 on an ocean cruising thing, nothing like that. And with all the amenities we have on these cruise ships today, all the, uh, the uh, entertainment, <clears throat> pools with the uh, slides, the hot tubs, <clears throat> the spas. I mean, gosh, the, the, all the amenities that we have in the spas. You pay extra for it, obviously, but you never had the chance to ever experience something like that. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Cruising today is uh, is a really a bargain. And, of course, we compare it all the time. We know we regulars, but for you newbies out there who are joining us, a cruise is so much cheaper than a land-based resort head-to-head uh, -head comparison. If you're you're talking like uh, a balcony cruise uh, going on a Caribbean uh, holiday, uh, you're talking ocean views, uh, warm weather. Um, uh, you want an ocean view five-star resort uh, in Miami or in uh, Tampa or in, uh, say, down in San Diego. G good luck getting anything close to what a cruise will run you. Um, I was saying earlier on my earlier show tonight, I had a guest uh, viewer commenting to me about the seaside, and he had a great time on the seaside, had a great cruise, unlike my friend here who just got a 10% offer. Uh, but he paid uh, big bucks for his, his cruise. He was in a, uh, an upgraded cabin. He had one of these uh, upgraded packages that gave him a, a, a drink card, unlimited drinks, including the specialty coffees, the colas. He also had a dining package deal. He had a spa use deal and a free massage for himself. He had a massage for his wife, drink card for his wife. I mean, it was the whole deal. But I think 3500 to four grand was the cost of that deal, right? So he, he paid top dollar. But even so, uh, I was thinking of that going, you know what? That's still a good deal. It's still a good deal. For what he got for that money, you want to do that uh, in a five-star resort in South Miami Beach? You can't do it. There's, there's no way. For 3500 bucks in a week, you cannot have all your meals and we're talking five-star food here because he had the upgraded package. Uh, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner was really good. He had uh, the entertainment on board. Okay, take it or leave it with the opera and whatever. Uh, all the amenities, the resort amenities, the drink packages uh, with the specialty coffees. Uh, you factor all that in, plus his room and the view. Uh, there's no way for $3,500. Not, not in Miami, not South Beach. No way. You're talking five grand in Miami, I would think. 5000 uh, and you're not going to have all the amenities that the ship has anyway. The, these five stars don't have a 1,500-person entertainment room uh, with different shows every night. They, they don't have that. So, uh, yeah, you you will not get that kind of a deal on a land-based resort compared to a cruise ship. That's why cruising is so, so popular. And the cruise lines know it. The customers know it. Uh, we cruisers, we know it. And uh, we're enjoying it. There's no doubt about it. Uh, let's see here. Um, Streaming Bean, where were you living in 1980? Uh, I was in Calgary. Uh, I was in Calgary in 1980, uh, out west there, and uh, not good times. Uh, 1980, bad, bad year, bad year. Richard Karmaski, oh my God, don't get me started on airfares. It used to be a pleasure to fly. You could change your flight at the drop of a dime. Got to know flight crew on Chicago to Philly on, on weekly TWA flights, loved it. Yeah, I mean, things have changed for the good and for the bad, right? Um, the pricing is is definitely uh, better today, but you get less. Uh, you're paying more for certain upgrades, of course. But on a jet plane, let's be reasonable and be fair. Um, I flew first class in 1978 for business, 79. Uh, but the first class in those days versus first class today, you, there's no comparison. Now, I will admit that a lot of first class flights don't exist anymore. Uh, in North America, uh, the so-called uh, you know first-class seat from uh, you know St. Louis to New York might not exist anymore. It might only there may only be economy and business class. Really, there isn't even a first class anymore. For true first-class travel today, today you have to fly practically internationally, and even that is beginning harder, getting harder to find. 
more and more uh, airlines are eliminating first class entirely. They're just going with an upgraded business class version. And then they get the premium economy in that middle area and then the economy behind that. Um, so that's changed too. But uh, yeah, it was a lot more relaxed, wasn't it? It wasn't as tense. Um, it was just a different time, but it was a different, it was a different world. It was a different world, just the way it was. Steamy Bean, folks are getting fatter and airline scenes are getting, seats are getting smaller. <laughs> I kind of tend to agree. I know that in my case, I, I used to be skinnier. <laughs> Twin video, uh, you have to pay for seat upgrade now. Uh, yes, uh, you do, Twin. Uh, you got to pay to book, you know, even pick a seat, right? You want to pick a seat? Oh, that's 10 bucks more, 20 bucks more. You want to bring a carry on on board? Oh, that's more. You know, some are going to charge for that. The first bag used to be 10 bucks, then it went to 20 bucks. So then the second bag was an extra 10 or an extra, now it's an extra 50. Oh, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's a really, uh, it's really nuts. The add-on, Steamy Bean. Where are you from, Richard? Richard saying flying is taking, uh, it's like taking the bus now. People were civil back in the '80s. Great food, free drinks, large seats, large seats, uh, and of course the employees were, were, I think, much better treated by their employers in those days. Uh, they could actually retire. They could work for the airline for 30 years and retire on a pension from an airline. Today, you start as a uh, flight attendant. Um, you're going to have to go for decades to get anywhere near a retirement package uh, they just don't pay like they used to pay it just, just doesn't pay uh richard saying philadelphia jim thomas uh, yeah but did he get the monogram clothespin on the seaside did oh that's a good question yeah did he get the monogram clothespin on the seaside oh no jim i don't know uh <laughs> steamy bean eagle span all right, ah, we got some trivia questions for you tonight, uh, and I got I got a little bit of trivia information for you today. Um, here's the first question for you guys, and uh, I looked this information up today, and I'm going to throw this at you and see if any of you can answer it. Um, but uh, um, you might, uh, you know, th those of you who who love watching uh, uh, pirate movies and. Uh, uh, those of you who are military buffs, um, you'll know, uh, or you should be aware, that in the Navy, uh, there was a time where sailors were given a daily ration of rum. This is a true thing. It really happened that uh, sailors were at sea for extended periods of time. And uh, between 11 and 12 in the morning, just before lunchtime, uh, sailors would be given a ration of rum, and it would be carefully measured out by the uh, senior officer on board, but the top officers wouldn't have one. They wouldn't be entitled to one. It was for uh, the uh, non-ranking officers. Um, and uh, the practice was, uh, it was, it was killed off over the years. It slowly died out. The question I have for you guys today and I'll just double check here for my messages. Uh, <laughs> Steamy Bean Eagles. As Sylvia's here. Hi, Bruce. Back again for a little while. Still bombing Greensboro. Thunderstorm later this evening. Hi, Sylvia. Steamy Bean. Ra rum, ration, rum ration is alive and well. Uh, yeah, it depends on wh whose Navy you're on. <laughs> All right. Now, which countries were the last to stop issuing its sailors their daily ration of rum? What year? And uh, what 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 country was the very last country, the very last country to offer their sailors a ration? And what year was that in? Uh, we're kind of curious if any of you might know that. Um, I was surprised at what I saw here and what I read. Um, I can tell you that the United States is not the uh, winner of this one, although the United States at one time did issue rations of rum to its uh, members of its Navy. Uh, I'd like to know if any of you can tell me what year that the United States stopped issuing rations of rum to its sailors on board its Navy ships. I uh, wonder if you're curious about that. Uh, Steamy Bean's asking about the UK. Uh, it's not the UK. Richard Kornomaski, Britain, nope. Uh, Britain was not the last. Uh, Wendy Thompson, the English, nope. Steamy Bean is saying Canada, nope, nope. Canada also did have rations of rum, but they were not uh, the last country to do so. Steamy Bean is thinking about Australia, and it's not Australia. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Uh, Navy, anyways. Uh, let's see. Anyone else has a guess? Uh, what year did the United States stop issuing rum rations? Anybody know? Richard Kormaski is guessing New Zealand, and he's correct. Uh, it was New Zealand. 
What year did New Zealand stop issuing rum rations to their sailors? Uh, Charlie Baum is asking about Bermuda. Nope. Um, I've got four countries here that I'm going to ask you about. Uh, you can try to guess the year that these countries ended their uh, their rationing. Tammy Ray, Mexico only because it's rum, yes, but probably no, <laughs> it's not. Jim uh, Jim uh, Thomas, Britain, uh, Richard Kormaski, 1864. No, 1862 for the United States. 1862. Uh, New Zealand, 1998. No, 1990 was New Zealand. The last time they issued uh, an official uh, uh, rash of rum. Canada was 1972 and Britain was 1970. The UK, 1970 was the last year that they issued rum to their sailors on board a ship every day. <laughs> now, back in the uh, 1800s, 1700s, 1800s, early days, they, uh, the, in the UK, specifically the, the United Kingdom, but other navies did this as well. They would add to the rum, uh, there would be some water and rum. There'd be like a, a pur proportion of each, but they would add a little bit of either lemon or lime juice to the rum ration to go and fight scurvy for the effects of scurvy. So it was good for you. <laughs> that was an interesting bit of trivia. I like that. I like reading about that today. I was kind of curious. The old rum ration, uh, how that worked. True Twin Video uh, production was saying I would give guest Russia, but nope, no, not the Russians. All right, so here we go. Uh, another trivia question for you. There are 25 correct answers. I'm getting my pen ready to write down, to scratch off the winners here, the correct answers. The, the question today on this trivia question is uh, the countries in the world, uh, the countries with the most airports on the planet. What are the top 25 countries? Don't cheat. Don't go on Google. Don't do any of that. Just start guessing off 25 countries for me, and I'll scratch them off the list and tell you how you're doing. The 25 countries with the most airports. Uh, in uh, the world, the world. Uh, let's see what we got. Richard Kormaski is starting off with the USA. Number one. Yep, US number one. Not a surprise there. Uh, let's see who else we got. China. Richard's going with China. Uh, China is on the list. Number 14. Um, I'm sure they're moving up the ranks these days, but 14. Canada from Tammy Ray. Yeah, number four. Canada, only 35 million people. America, 350 million. We're number four. Yeah, that's quite something. We love flying around. Uh, Richard Kornomaski is guessing Russia. Russia is on the list. Number five is Russia. Uh, USA, Tammy, we got it. Wendy, US, yep. Tammy is going with China as well. We have it. Uh, Tammy, Russia again. Debbie is US. Uh, Sylvia, France. France. Sylvia is saying France. And uh, yes, number 17. 17 on the list is France. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Um, Germany from Tammy Ray. Germany, yes, 13 is, is uh, Germany. Uh, let's see who else is guessing here. Mexico from Richard Kornomaski. Number three, third most highest number of airports is Mexico. Quite something. Big country. Uh, Wendy is also saying Mexico. Richard Kornomaski is going for Italy. Uh, I'm taking a look at my list and to see if Italy is on the list. Italy, Italia. No, Italy does not make the top 25. Surprise, surprise. Richard Kormaski is guessing Greece. Uh, no, I don't believe so. No, Greece is not on the list. No. Uh, Australia from Tammy. Tammy, um, Australia. Yes, 16. Australia made number 16 on the list. Germany, we've got steaming bean. What is the question? Steaming green. The question is countries with the most airports in the world. And I'll go over who we've got. So far, we've got number one, USA, number three, Mexico, number four, Canada, number five, Russia. We've got number 13, Germany, 14, China, 16, Australia, 17, France. Those are the answers that have come in so far. Tammy Ray is asking about Japan. And I will tell you, uh, Japan is not on the list for the top 25. Uh, Steaming Bean is thinking about Spain. And uh, I am looking for Spain, and I am not finding Spain. No. Uh, China, uh, Kelly is going China, Spain, Russia, Canada, Great Britain. <laughs> uh, I think uh, you got one there for sure. You got the United Kingdom. Uh, you got Great Britain for sure. China's on there already. Spain, no. Russia's on. Canada's on. Great Britain. 
Charlie Baum, Japan. Nope, Australia, we've got it already. Um, Japan, Australia was 16. India from the steaming beam. Yeah, 21, 21st place. Ireland, no, Ireland did not make the top 25. Uh, I, I think the country would be covered in payment. <laughs> uh, Dylan LaRue, you're back. How you doing, buddy? Welcome from Henderson, Nevada. Dylan, the question is, what countries have the most airports in the world? Top 25 countries with the most airports. Tammy Ray's guessing England. We got it already. Steaming Bean is going for Brazil. That's number two. Brazil, second most airports in the world. Quite something, quite something. Uh, Chile, Richard Koronamaski is asking if Chile or guessing if Chile is on the list. Nope, Chile does not make, sorry, yes, Chile does make list. I apologize. Number 15, you got Chile. We have one, two, three, four, five already. USA, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, Russia. We're looking for six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All those guys, we've got a bunch we're looking for. Indonesia, the steaming bean. Indonesia, yep, we got Indonesia right here. Thank you. Richard Kornomaski, UAE, nope, not on the list. Steaming Bean, Malaysia. Malaysia is, uh, no, not on the list. Malaysia, nope. Uh, they do fly. They have a Malaysian Airlines. They fly everywhere, but they don't have enough airports to uh, get the top 25. Right now we have the USA, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, Russia, Indonesia, Germany, China, Chile, Australia, France, UK, India. And we're looking for the remainder. Let's see what we have here. Kelly is asking about Egypt. I don't think so. Let me take a look at Egypt. Nope, nope, not yet. Uh, South Africa is being guessed by uh, Dylan. Uh, Dylan, uh, let me just take a look. Yeah, you got one. Number 11 is South Africa. Way to go. Um, Richard Kormaski is asking about Thailand. 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 No, sir, not on the list. Japan, we've already guessed. Turkey, we're looking for Turkey. Uh, Wes Morris, who's asking that? That's Tammy Ray. Turkey, um, do we have Turkey on the list? No, we do not have Turkey on the list. Ecuador, Wes is looking at Ecuador. Uh, sorry, that would be the steaming bean. Am I correct, steaming bean? Who's asking Ecuador? Uh, Wes Morrison is Ecuador, pardon me. Yeah, number 20, Ecuador, thank you. Um, Richard Kornomaski, Iraq, Iraq, yes. Uh, I think, hang on a second, I could be wrong. Uh, wait, did I see that right? Iraq. Uh, no, Iraq is not on the list. I'm sorry, it's not Iraq. Uh, no, no, not Iraq. Uh, Israel, no, Israel is not on the list. Not for the most airports, no. Greece, steaming bean. I think we've had that guest already. No, Greece is not on the list. Uh, freeze. Charlie Baum is saying freeze. <laughs> he retracted that. Did we guess Russia? Yes, we did. And it's on the list, Tammy. Uh, Richard, Iran. Yes, Iran is on the list, number 22. And then Steaming Bean is saying Sweden. Yep, number 25 is Sweden. We're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got eight left to go. Uh, eight left to go. I'm going to start giving you hints. Um, let's give you a hint here. Um, one of the countries I'm looking for is an island nation. An island nation is one of them. Um, and uh, let's see if I can give you some other hints here. Um, let me just check in who's who's where and what. There are no more uh, European countries in the uh, mix. Um, we're talking South American countries, uh, folks. We need South American countries. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, steaming beans, Sweden, Greece, the West Morse of South Korea is asking about South Korea. No, South Korea is not on the list for the most airports. No, uh, Dylan Rue, Canada. I love trivia, and I'm doing better here than on the cruise ship. <laughs> Canada was already guessed, it's number four. Uh, very sophisticated country up here in Canada. We got a lot of airports. Richard Kermaski, Vietnam. Uh, no, sir, uh, not on the top 25 of airports. New Zealand, Tammy Ray, we've already uh, guessed New Zealand. Uh, or have we? Uh, if I apologize, it's not on the list anyway. Sorry. Um, and uh, let's see here. It's <laughs> me being no hits. Uh, Switzerland, Sylvia saying no. Um, as as uh, Sylvia, Trinidad and Tobago, no, no. Uh, South America, I'm looking for. Uh, Argent, uh, Steaming Bean is going Argent. I think you're talking Argentina, uh, and it is number six on the list. Argentina, Cuba, no. Panama, no. 
Uh, definitely not. Um, I'm still looking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, there's an island nation involved. There's a uh, Asian nation involved. Actually, two. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, Cuba, Panama. Uh, Richard Kormaski, <laughs> yay, steaming. <laughs> uh, yeah, got a few more to go. Um, uh, think south. Definitely think south, people. Uh, not north. Uh, here come the guesses from north. Mexico. We already have twin video. It was already guessed. And it's it is one of the countries. Uh, Kenya was guessed. No, Tammy. And uh, um, uh, uh, Sea Keeper Iceland. No, sir. <laughs> not Iceland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not not I. I'm, I'm talking south. Go go, go south. Way south. <laughs> south Africa. Richard Kornomaski is asking about South Africa. And South Africa was already guessed. It's number eleven. Yep, it is a country number eleven. Jamaica uh, from Sylvia. No, no, not not Jamaica. Sri Lanka. No, uh, Sri Lanka is not on the list of the 25, the countries with the most airports. No, not Sri Lanka. Got travelers, but not 25 most airports on the planet. No. Um, let's see if I can give you any other hints, any other kind of guesses. Um, yeah, we're, 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 we're saying South America. <laughs> Think of the countries in South America. Antarctica from uh, Tammy Ray. That's, you know, it's not a country. <laughs> No, a lot of ice landing fields, I guess, but no, no, not going to work. Richard Kormaski, Greece, no, sir, I never was on, is not on the list, not on the list at all. Uh, <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, uh, we have one country that is just south of Mexico, just south of Mexico. Uh, Bolivia from the steaming bean, correct? We got, uh, we got Bolivia number seven, believe it or not. Uh, the Maldives? No, sir. Uh, Peru? Is Peru on the list? No, Peru is not on. Uruguay? Uh, Uruguay? New way. New way for Uruguay. Sorry, steaming bean. West Morrison, Indonesia? No, uh, not on the list. Colombia from uh, from Seakeeper? I think, uh, yes, number eight. You got Colombia, sir. Very well done. Tammy Ray, penguins can't fly, though. That's right. Richard Kormaski is guessing Costa Rica for just south of Mexico. It's a good guess for the south of Mexico, but it's not the country I'm looking for, sir. Uh, penguin, she's saying, Tammy. Uh, Richard, uh, Honduras? No, that's another good guess. Um, Venezuela, Bob Hollis. You got Venezuela. That's number 19. Very well done. Still, I'm looking for one, two, three, four answers. Just four more. Uh, Venezuela, we got Guatemala. Yep, that's one of them right there. Uh, number 23 was Guatemala. That's just south of Mexico. Very well done. Kelly Stojanovic, uh, Kuwait? No, it's not. No, Kuwait It's not. Uh, they got, I think, one big airport. <laughs> uh, Sylvia, damn, what island nation do you want, Sylvia? Yes, there's an island nation. Uh, I'll tell you, the island nation is in the Asia area, and they are uh, number 24 on the list for the most airports. Uh, steaming bean, Nicaragua? No, Belize from Kelly? No, Paraguay from Ch uh, uh, Paraguay? Yeah. Sea Keepers got Paraguay. That's number nine. We're now down to uh, one, two to go. <coughs> two to go. Uh, Paraguay, Pan uh, pa Paraguay, Panama, Midway Island. No, no, not, not none of those are right. I used to live in Kuwait. It wasn't fun, a steaming bean is saying. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, a lot of work. Uh, you were probably working uh, in, in the patch, uh, would be my guess, or teaching. Were you teaching over there? Because I think you're a teacher, aren't you? Uh, Nina is saying is asking the Maldives. No, it's not the Maldives. Um, I've got one country that has three names. The country you need three names to name this country. That's one of them. The other one, just one name, just has one name in its name. <laughs> they both start with the same letter. Mm, they both start with the same letter. Now we're wondering. Uh, Philippines, steaming bean. Philippines, yeah, you got it. Number 24 is Philippines. I need uh, the other country starts with a P. It has three names in its in its uh, country name, and it's the last one on my list. Let's see if you guys can find it. The Republic of Haiti <laughs> doesn't start with the R, does it? Doesn't, doesn't start with a P, you know? And it's no, no, uh, no. <laughs> uh, looking for a country that starts with the letter P. It has three names in it, three words, three words makes the country name. 
and uh, port port to go port to go no 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 <laughs> people's republic of korea you know it, no, not working. It's not working. Richard Karavaski is liking this. <laughs> Last country. Uh, it's a surprise to me. I would never have guessed this country for top 25 uh, most airports in, in the country. A world count. I would never guess this country. Never thought of this country. Here we go. Papua New Guinea from the steaming beam. It is Papua New Guinea. Uh, Who would have thought of Papua New Guinea? Why? Why? Here are the winners or the 25 uh, countries. It's the United States, number one, Brazil, Mexico, Canada is fourth, Russia is fifth, Argentina, Bolivia, Colombia, Paraguay, and Indonesia round out the top 10. Then we have South Africa, Papua New Guinea, Germany, China, Chile, Australia, France, the United Kingdom, Venezuela, Ecuador, India, Iran, Guatemala, the Philippines, and Sweden make up the top 25 countries with the most airports. Who knew? Okay, so now this is part one of two. And then we're going to wrap this show up. And uh, this is the first one. This is, a, there's 25 uh, answers here. And I want you guys to try to answer me. Uh, just try to think this through now. The uh, 25 countries... Uh, the top 25 countries, I'm going to give it to you that way, the top 25 countries with the, uh, let's call it the best passports, the passports, most accepted passports in the world. Uh, what countries make up the top 25? All right. So uh, let's call it who's got the golden passports, top 25 golden passports. Uh, fire away, you guys. Richard Koromaski is going right to the USA, and the USA is in the top 10. It's number seven. Uh, it's um, it's uh, tied. Uh, it's actually tied for second place, uh, and I'll explain that a little bit later, but it's, in, it's definitely up there, the United States. Uh, the Steaming Bean is saying New Zealand, and yes, sir, uh, it's on the list. Uh, United Kingdom from Richard Koromaski, that is correct. The UK makes the list in, in the top three. Uh, Gaylene is here. Hi, Bruce. Uh, she's saying Canada. Uh, you're right. Canada's right up there. Canada's in the is number eleven actually. Uh, let's see uh, what other Canada countries do we have. Uh, Steaming Bean went with Canada. Richard Kormaski, Germany. Yes, Germany is in number five, tied with actually USA and Germany are tied. Uh, uh, sea Keeper Canada, of course. Uh, Sweden from Nina Frank. Uh, that's a home. That's a home guess, isn't it? But you're right. It's a you're a homie. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, actually number tied with number one uh, passport. It, one of the best. Uh, Ireland. Steaming Bean is going with Ireland, and uh, yeah, number thirteenth place, Ireland. Uh, Tammy is saying USA. Yep, it's number. It's right in there. We we uh, have it as number seven. Richard, uh, Sw uh, Swiss, uh, Switzerland, perhaps, the Swiss passport. And, yep, it's in the top 20. Uh, Debbie, boy, Debbie, Canadian and British, both have been guessed, and you're right on both. Tammy Ray, Canada, got it. G Steaming Bean, Canada, Germany, we got it. Uh, Debbie Emmanuel, USA, we have it. Uh, S uh, Sylvia is, saying, uh, is guessing France. And i um, looking for France on the list. Yep, it's there. Number 12, France is there. Uh, Steaming Bean Swiss, we have it. Uh, video, a twin video, Switzerland. Yes, we've got it. Uh, China, uh, Sylvia is guessing China. Is China on the list? Uh, taking a look and uh, nope, China is not in the top 25. Nope, not yet. Uh, uh, sea Keeper Norway, Sweden, Denmark. Norway, Sweden, Denmark. We've already got Sweden. Denmark is number four. And uh, Norway is number 15. So they're all there. Uh, South Africa from the Steaming Bean. Uh, Steaming Bean is guessing South Africa. Uh, no, sir. Not on the list at all. Uh, Great Britain. We have the UK. We've got it. West uh, Australia from Bob Hollis. Uh, yep. Australia is on the list. We got it now. Thank you. Uh, Tammy uh, Ray is looking for Japan, and uh, Japan is on the list, number 14. 
Uh, let's see. Who else have I got? Uh, Jim Thomas, U.S. We have it already. Sweden has been guessed. Richard, we got it. Debbie's guessing China. We have it. Um, a sea keeper is going with Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein is not in the top 25. I was surprised myself. I thought it would be. Uh, Kelly uh, Stoyanovich, USA, Canada, China, Japan. Uh, USA, yes. Canada, yes. China, no. Japan, yes. Guess all guessed. Steaming Bean, Norway, guessed it already. Uh, Galen is, I think, saying France. We've already got it. Kelly, Great Britain, we got it. Uh, Steaming Bean is saying Holland. <laughs> um, that would be uh, the uh, that would be uh, <laughs> the Netherlands. Uh, you're guessing the Netherlands. Uh, Holland, I'm thinking Holland is the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, Holland is there, number ten. Got it. Uh, Australia, we have Korea. Bob Hollis. You got to be a little more specific. There's a couple of Koreas. <laughs> I think I gave it away. Uh, Kelly is saying, uh, is guessing Sweden, and we have it at number two, or, or tied for first, actually. There's another number one. You guys haven't guessed it yet. Um, uh, Richard Kornomaski is guessing Russia, and uh, I'm looking at Russia, and I'm telling you, uh, no, sir, Russia is not in the top 25. Steaming Bean, Australia, we got it. Uh, it's in there. Greece. Uh, Richard Kornomaski is asking or uh, asking about Greece, and I can tell you it's 22. Greece is on the list at 22. Uh, who else we have? Gaylene is going with Spain. Uh, España. España. Yeah, 17 for Spain. Uh, and then Japan, we've got it. Uh, Finland, Nina Frank is going to Finland. Number one, tied with Sweden and the United Kingdom for number one. 173 countries uh, accept the uh, Finland Finland passport. Uh, yeah, it's the gold. It's right up there. Steamy Bean, I was timed out. <laughs> too many guesses in too short a time frame. You're putting on the timeout. Galen, uh, Iceland. Um, Galen, I don't. Think so? Uh, no, no, I, no. Sorry, I apologize. Yes, yes. Iceland, number twenty-five, the last one to make it. Just squeezed in there, one hundred and sixty-five countries. It's a very good passport. Iceland. Uh, Kelly uh, Stoyanovic is guessing about India. India is not on the list. No. Uh, who else is here? Oh, uh, a sea keeper, a uh, Bur Burkina Faso. No so. <laughs> Faso, no so. Uh, South Korea from the steaming bean. That is correct. It is South Korea. Uh, they made the list at 24th place. Uh, um, Ireland, we have it. Uh, Morocco, no, Bob, not Morocco. Uh, sea Keeper, Netherlands. Uh, I think we've already got it. Uh, yep, we've already got it. And um, uh, Burkina Faso, no, Richard. Uh, New Zealand, we have. England, we have. Uh, Turkey. From uh, uh, Sea Keeper, no, I don't believe Turkey's on the list. Let me tell you who we who you've guessed. All right, you've guessed Finland, Sweden, United Kingdom, Denmark, Germany. You haven't got the sixth country, USA. Then there's a blank, another blank. Then the Netherlands, Canada, uh, France is nine. Ireland is the tenth. Japan, Norway, Spain, Austria, N New Zealand, Switzerland. Greece, South Korea, and Iceland. You've got 19 correct, six to go. Six left to go. And uh, let's move up this little list here. Steaming Bean is saying uh, he's wondering about Portugal. And, uh, yeah, Portugal is number 16 on the list. That's one of them. Five to go. Uh, Kelly's going, you guys are too fast. Laugh it out loud. Uh, Dylan LaRue, small country in Europe by chance? Uh, I haven't got, clue, I haven't got hint, hints yet. We'll get there. Kelly Stianovic, Israel? No, no, Israel not. Steamy Bean, uh, Tuwa Wan? Tu are you thinking Taiwan? <laughs> uh, Taiwan uh, is uh, not on the list of the top 25. No, Mor Monaco. Monaco is a guess. Nope, Monaco does not make the list. Uh, Nina, sorry. Uh, Seakeeper, uh, uh, Greenland. Greenland, no, that's part of Belgium. Um, uh, and if you guess Belgium, you're right. <laughs> Belgium is on the list. So I'll give it to you that way. Uh, Italy, Galen is asking about Italy. Yes, number nine. Italy is on the list. We've now got the top nine, 10, 11, 12. We got the first 16. We got the first 20 done. There's the 21st, the 23rd, 
uh, left. I think there's only two left. Sorry, no, no, there's three left. Number six. You have to guess number six. There's three left. Uh, Italy, we got Cape Verde. No, uh, Benin, Richard Kornomaski, Benin. <laughs> no, Argentina. No, uh, Israel. No, Russia. No, UAE. No, no hints. No, <laughs> France. Steaming Bean is asking about France. We have it. Uh, we've got France already. Uh, France came in at number 12. There are three left to go number six, number 21. And number 23, and I'm just going to double check my guesses to make sure I have not made a mistake because I'm worried that I may have made an error, and I'm going to just double check. I have made an error. I apologize. I owe an apology to the Steaming Bean. Steaming Bean guessed Australia, and it is correct. I just did not uh, see it, or I missed it. There are only two left, folks. There are only two guesses left. Um uh, Moldova from Richard Kornomaski. No, Eritrea from the Steaming Bean. No, Jim Thomas, Mexico. We already, uh, we've already guessed Mexico. It's not on the. Uh, I don't even think Mexico is on the list. Um, who else? Monaco. No, the Steaming Bean. Costa Rica. No. Uh, <laughs> Nina Frank. Greenland doesn't belong to Belgium, but to Denmark. He got. Oh, very good. Thank you. You are right. I am incorrect. Belgium was not guessed by anyone, and I gave it away. That is true. You are correct, Nina, and you are. Uh, I give you bonus points for that. Uh, there are still two left. There's one uh, number six spot and the number 23 spot. Uh, I'll give you a hint. They are both small. They're both small. Um, yeah, they're both small. <laughs> we'll see if that helps anybody. Uh, e Ethiopia? Panama, no. Gaylene Davidson, Singapore. Yes, Singapore is number 23, 167 countries. That leaves us with number six, and uh, it is small. Uh, I think the country's population, I think it's 30,000, but I might even be high on that. Uh, but I think it's 30,000 for the country. Uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Richard Kornomaski, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Jim Thomas. You're you're uh, right. They don't need no stinking passports in Mexico. <laughs> we don't need no stinking passports. <laughs> the Vatican. Well, that that's small, small. No, Vatican isn't even on the list. I uh, I don't don't know what their their count number is. Uh, Jim Thomas saying right. Uh, Sylvia Turkey. No, Nina Frank Luxembourg. Uh, correct. It's Luxembourg. Uh, in the uh, in Europe, uh, Republic of Kirib <laughs> Kiribati, <laughs> Cuba, and uh, uh, Richard started typing in Liechtenstein, gave up. <laughs> Liechtenstein from Twin Video, you got it uh, as far as you typed it out, but it, that's not the answer. It was Luxembourg. It was Luxembourg. We we got it. Here are your here are your winners. Uh, the top twenty five passports to uh, have in the world. Uh, the golden passports. Number one. 173 countries would be Finland, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. Second place is 172 countries, uh, Denmark, Germany, Luxembourg, the United States of America. 171 countries, Belgium, Italy, and the Netherlands. With 170 countries, we have Canada, France, Ireland, Japan, Norway, Portugal, Spain. 168 countries, Austria, New Zealand, Switzerland. 167 countries, Australia, Greece, Singapore. And then 166 countries is South Korea. 165 countries, Iceland. Those are the golden passports. Now we want the passports made of lead. The worst passports you could hold that will allow you into the fewest countries uh, without a visa or special papers. The worst 24 uh, are available for your guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, guess the worst 24 countries. Uh, <laughs> Steaming Bean, who are the top 25 uh, seekiest seek, followers of Bruce? <laughs> um, Seakeeper going for Somalia. And you are correct. Number uh, That is the second worst passport to have is Somalia. Uh, Eritrea from the Steaming Bean. Yes, number five. Uh, let's see here. Mexico. Debbie Emanuel is guessing 
Mexico is one of the 25 worst countries. No, they're not in the world. They're in the middle somewhere. Not Mexico. North Korea. Yes. Uh, we have a winner with a loser. Uh, North Korea is 19th. It still allows 39, 39 countries to allow you in if you have a North Korean passport. Unbelievable. Um, let's see who else have we got here. Uh, Cuba. Uh, Jim Thomas is asking about Cuba and Mexico. Uh, Cuba is not uh, one of the worst. No, nope, it's not. Uh, Iran. Tammy Ray is asking about Iran. Yeah, number 13. Iran, only 21 countries will allow, uh, allow you into the Iranian passport. No questions asked. Uh, Bob Hollis is asking about Russia. No, nope. Russia is not in the bottom 25. No, they're in the middle. Uh, the Steaming Bean, I meant the sexiest followers. Who are Bruce's 15 sexiest followers? <laughs> There's some trivia. There's some sad trivia there, I think. <laughs> North Korea, we got it. Uh, Gaylene Davidson is asking about Cuba. No, nope. uh, Senegal. Sea Keeper is asking about Senegal. And uh, I think we got a winner. Let me just double check. You know what? I don't think so. Uh, Somalia. Um, let's take a look here. Uh, no, Senegal is not on the list. Senegal is not the one of the worst 25. Isn't that something? Uh, Russia, no, Nigeria is a, is the next guess. Uh, Nigeria, um, Nigeria, nope, nope. They have enough uh, enough countries to not uh, keep that be down there. Haiti from the steaming bean. Haiti, uh, not in the bottom twenty five. Nope, not Haiti either. Uh, Sylvia, Eritrea, never heard of that country. <laughs> well, it's not on the it's not on the cruise. Cruise itinerary, I'll tell you that. Not on a cruise itinerary. Uh, Steaming Bean is asking about Iraq. Yep, number three is Iraq. 30 countries. Uh, Cuba, no. Lebanon. Tammy Ray is asking Lebanon. Yeah, 35 countries. Number seven, Lebanon. Uh, Mexico, no. Uh, Mexico is better than that, folks. Mexico, Mexicans are loved. They're, they're, Mexicans with passports are loved. It's the Mexicans without them. That's the problem. Kelly, North Korea, we've got it already. Uh, it was uh, North Korea was number 19. It's not not even the worst 10. Uh, number 19. Uh, Syria from a sea, uh, sea keeper. Syria uh, is number nine. Correct. You're in there. Zambia. Gaylene Davidson is asking about Zambia. And uh, Zambia is not on the list. Um, I guess enough, uh, enough um, Commonwealth countries probably allow Zambians in to be in the not to be in the bottom 24. Uh, S. Swan is asking about, uh, Sylvia is asking about Turkey. Uh, Turkey uh, is not on the list. Uh, the way things are going these days, you never know, but no, no, Turkey is not on the list. Um, uh, Steaming beans, sadly, the list will have many African countries. Kelly uh, Stoyanovich is saying, uh, is asking about Iran. We've already got it. Steaming bean, I taught in Eritrea. Oh, that would have, that would, that couldn't have been fun. <laughs> interesting but fun i don't know i don't know about that interesting stuff kelly stoyanovic is guessing afghanistan and you are right that's the worst one of them all the worst passport is afghanistan only 26 countries will let you in only 26 <clears throat> good one kelly uh says jim thomas steamy bean uh taught he taught there uh, uh, Sylvia is saying, I have to look up Eritrea. <laughs> yeah. Tammy Ray, Turkey? Nope, nope. Um, Steaming Bean, Eritrea is next to Ethiopia, and it's pretty sad. Steaming Bean, lovely people, though. Lovely people, I'm sure. Uh, but, boy, uh, tough times, right? Very tough times. Let me, get, let me tell you who you've guessed so far, folks. Afghanistan, Somalia, Iraq, Eritrea, Lebanon, Syria, Syria Iran, North Korea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight correct answers. 16 to go. Think of the most miserable places <laughs> where a cruise ship will not go. <laughs> we'll see if we can find them here. Um, Charlie Bomb, Vietnam. No, no, Vietnam is, uh, is accepted in many more countries. Not in the bottom 24. No. Uh, Kelly, uh, Hungary, Poland. No, both are okay. 
Uh, African Republic. The African Republic. Uh, no, I don't have uh, anything called African Republic. Uh, let's see. Steaming Bean. Bruce has got the hiccups. Yeah, I do. Uh, Steaming Bean. Myanmar. Myanmar. Yep, number 11. Myanmar. Uh, Brazil. Tammy Ray, Brazil. No, Brazil is not that bad off. No, no. Uh, it's, uh, it's not on that list. Uh, steaming beans, South Sudan. Uh, let's see here. Yep, South Sudan is number 17. It's a sad place. Suriname. Seakeeper is asking about Suriname and uh, not making the list. Nope, nope. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Kelly's gone. <laughs> uh, the steaming bean, uh, Central Central African Republic. A Central African Republic, not on the list. Um, nope, not on the list. Uh, Tammy Ray, Egypt. Um, no, Egypt is uh, not on the list of the worst 24. No, not on the list for the worst 24. Uh, okay, let's see if anyone else is coming in with any guesses before I have to start giving some away. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, okay, okay. None of these countries are in North America. I can tell you that right now. Uh, so you've got all North America covered. Uh, so from like Panama North, forget about it. You don't have to guess any countries, Panama North. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, People's Republic of Alabama. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh my my my! I can't I can't say anything. I can't I can't proclaim anyone from Alabama. I can't do that. Some wonderful people in Alabama. Great people in Alabama. Jim Thomas, Saudi uh, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. No, no, not Saudi Arabia. Pakistan. Tammy Ray is guessing Pakistan. Number four. Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. They got all kinds of problems in Pakistan. Passports are a problem too. Uh, yes. Well done. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, um, no. Let me just double check that. There's one. I guess there is one. There's one European country on the list. But uh, you wouldn't think of it as a European country. You'd kind of think of it more like an Asian country. But it's 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 sometimes placed in both. Belize, no, uh, not not. Uh, it's North American Belize, and we don't have any more countries in North America. India, no, uh, but India is not on the list of the worst twenty-four. Nicaragua, no, that's North America. Venezuela, no, uh, Venezuela, South America, uh, but uh, not on the worst on the worst list. Now uh, they're they're down there, but they're not that far down there. Um, Somalia. Uh, number two was guest. No, Somalia was guest is number two. Syria. Syria was guest number nine. Yep, got it. Heather Parsons. Hi, Heather. You guessed it. It's already been guessed. Um, I will give you uh, some more hints here. Um, uh, we're talking African nations and we're talking Asia nations for sure. Um, Syria, we have Mongolia, not on the list. Zambia, no, not on the list. Um, uh, African countries for sure. Uh, see me being, where is Belushi family from? I don't know. I don't know where the Belushi family is from. I don't know. Heather Parsons. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Heather. <laughs> um, one country is European, uh, but also on the edge of Asia, uh, but uh, definitely considered European. Um, uh, and then we have uh, African countries, and we have definitely some Asian countries. Um, uh, but definitely African. Rwanda is a guess coming in. Rwanda, uh, surprisingly not on the list, uh, Heather. It's uh, surprisingly not there. Kenya from Galen. Uh, no, Kenya is not on the list either. Uh, but near Kenya, yeah, yeah, near Rwanda, yeah, yeah. Albania, um, no, Albania not on the list. These are good guesses, though. I got to give it to you guys. These are good guesses. But uh, I mean, these countries, you know, they're not they're not rock stars either. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, the one country I'm thinking of, the sixth country, just north of India, just north of India. Uh, let's see, uh, a Belushi is an Albanian name. Must even be saying, okay, Nepal, Kelly. Yep, Nepal. That's number six. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, lower Slobovia. <laughs> lower Slobovia. Okay. No, no, there's no country called Slobovia. Mali. No. Congo. Uh, Congo. The Democratic Republic of the Congo would be correct at number 18. I'll give you that one. Pakistan has been guessed. Yep, at number four. Uh, Yemen, you'd think, you'd think Yemen would be on the heap, but they're not. I can't believe it. Yemen did not make the bottom 24. I I, I, I couldn't believe it. Yemen? Nope. Uh, steaming bean. Darn, Kelly. <laughs> Galen is saying Tanzania. Nope, nope, Tanzania. Kelly, uh, Greece. No, not Greece. Um, still looking for one a European country, uh, and the rest will be after. Africa, basically, although there's an Asia, definitely one Asia here that I can understand, I see for sure. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Zaire, no, not Zaire. Botswana, no, those are good guesses. Those are depressing places uh, in a way, but neither neither are uh, in our, uh, in our uh, area. Country I'm thinking of is next door to India, but it, we've already got Nepal. We've already got Pakistan. Next door to India, uh, we've already got Afghanistan. There's another country next door to India that's on this list. A steaming bean, France, laugh out loud. <laughs> Heather Parsons, uh, Ethiopia, uh, number 14. Ethiopia uh, is official. That is correct. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, waiting for the country next door to India. Heavy population, uh, 200 plus million live here. Um, see if anyone gets it. Iraq, Bob Hollis, Iraq. Um, did we already have Iraq? Uh, yeah, number three was Iraq, and we have Iran. Uh, Kelly is guessing Sudan, and Kelly, you're right. We had South Sudan and Sudan. You are right on that one. Uh, Nina Frank, shame, Kelly, shame on you, the cradle of civilization. <laughs> Gaylene Davidson, Myanmar, got it already. I'm going to read off what you got. Here are the ones you have. Afghanistan, Somalia, Iraq, Pakistan. Uh, so one, Afghanistan, Somalia, Iraq, Pakistan, Eritrea, uh, Nepal, Lebanon, Sudan, got that, and Syria. That's the top nine of the losers. Then we have Myanmar, Iran, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Democratic Republic of the Congo, North Korea, that's 15 of 24. Leaves nine. Um, uh, Jim Thomas, sure California is on that list. <laughs> Kelly Sioni was, I'm reaching. I'm really reaching now. I'm really reaching. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, got, a, got a country that's just south of India. It's an island nation. Uh, so I wonder if you can guess that one. Uh, the other nation I'm thinking of, it's a neighbor to India uh, over to the east side uh, towards Asia. See if anyone can guess that country. Heavy population of that country. There are many, many people. It's one of the most populated countries in the world. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, George Harrison uh, did a concert for this country in the 70s, Madison Square Garden. Uh, Bob Dylan was on stage with him. Bangladesh. Here it is. Bangladesh. Steamy Bean went Bangladesh. <laughs> Kelly Sjornovic is going Sri Lanka. Yes, both are correct. Sri Lanka is on the list, number 10. Bangladesh is number 24. Just made the cut, the awful cut. Uh, let me get my globe out, Debbie Emanuel, saying uh, Tibet from the steaming bean. No. Uh, Matagasta. Charlie, Charlie Baum is going Matagasta. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Madagascar is the real name, but no, it, that isn't on the list anyway. Uh, Bhutan, uh, Bhutan, no, Mongolia, Mongolia or Bhutan, um, neither make the list, unfortunately, uh, on this uh, sad list. Libya is, um, Libya is uh, on the list, number 20. Yeah, Libya is one of them. One, two, three, four, five, six to go, six to go. Libya was the latest, uh, Heather got that one, uh, well done. Uh, one country, uh, in this list is in Europe. Still haven't guessed it. Um, used to be part of Yugoslavia. How about that? Yugoslavia got carved up into all kinds of pieces. 
it's one of those pieces of Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia. Uh, see if that'll help you. Um, the country I'm thinking, the other country I'm thinking of has two consonants to start its name. Don't know if that'll help you. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Libya, Malaysia, Indonesia, Serbia. Wrong, 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 wrong. Well, Serbia, Serbia is a good yes. That's one of the Yugoslav countries, not the one. Bosnia, Herzegovina. Nope, not it. Austria, that third world country hosting Vienna and Mozart music. Austria. No, no, that's, they're not. They're not on there. Chechnya, Chechnya. No, no, not not Chechnya. No. Uh, <laughs> Um, Serbia and Bosnia, two good, good guesses. Swaziland, no, nope. Swaziland is not on the list either. Uh, still looking for some uh, some African countries. Ukraine, no, not Ukraine, no. Nope. Uh, Croatia, no, nope. that's another Yugoslav country, but it's not the one I'm thinking about. Not the one on the list. Very, very good guesses. Very good guesses coming from you guys for the former Yugoslavia. What used to be Yugoslavia. It's number 12 on the list. Only 37 countries will allow people in. Uh, only 30 will let these folks into the country. Only 37. Croatia. No, I can't think of any more countries, Tammy Ray saying. Zimbabwe, Heather Parsons is saying. Zimbabwe. No, you'd think it would be on the list, but being a uh, Commonwealth country, I, I guess enough Commonwealth countries let it in to keep it up higher, probably in the 30s or the 40s. I don't know. Maybe the 50s. Uh, okay, I'm stuck at this one, Debbie Emanuel says. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, any more hints that I can give you guys? Let's see. Kelly, uh, Czechoslovakia. No, no, there's there's the Czech Republic and there's Slovakia, and neither of them are, are on the bad guy list. No. Jim Thomas, I'm looking at the globe, and I'm still getting I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm still getting I'm wrong. Kelly, Uzbekistan. No. Azerbaijan. No. Serbia. Serbia. No, not Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> these are all good guesses. These really are. I, I commend all of you for these guesses. It's just that these particular countries, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, just, you just, you know, you could have easily guessed these as the ones you've been guessing. Nigeria, no, not Nigeria. Uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, I'm sure five of them are in Africa. Uh, one is in Europe. Uh, Canada, no. Montenegro, that's uh, also Europe, and no, very close, very close, but not Montenegro. Very, nice try, Heather. Very close. Um, let's see. One of the African countries starts with the letter A. How about that? I'll give that away. Amon, uh, Moro, Morava, Mor, Morava. No, no, Kelly, no more, no, no. Mozambique, steaming bean? No, not Mozambique. Montenegro, no, not Montenegro. Uh, Sierra Keon. Or Sierra Leone? No, neither. Neither, neither are correct. <laughs> uh, this is a tough one. This really is. I, I, I'm just, I'm being upfront with you guys. This is a toughie. Cambodia? No, that's Asia. And we've got the Asian country, uh, Bangladesh. We got Bangladesh. Uh, Macedonia and Slovenia? No, no, uh, that's not neither. Um, no, haven't got that yet. Still a couple of goals. So one African country get, begins with letter A. Uh, another African country begins with the letter B. Another African country begins with the letter C. So you got an A, a B, and a C, all Africa. Uh, Kosovo from uh, Heather Parsons. Correct. Kosovo is correct for the Met. That is the European country, and it was part of the uh, Yugoslav uh, thing. Uh, Sea Keeper, this sounds like a parade of athletes athletes at the olympics it's the only time you see the name you're watching nbc and they show in a little flag and they tell you the name of the country and there's two million people living in the place and that's the only time you'll ever see it yeah i agree yeah i'm not gonna win a medal <laughs> kelly austria hungary uh algeria al algeria from the steaming bean uh, no not algeria uh angola from p massey angola you got it that's one that's my a country I'm looking for a B country from Africa, a C country from Africa, a D country from Africa, and an E country from Africa. So we're looking for a B, C, D, and E. And starting with the B, C, D, or E. Uh, Heather came with an Angola. 
just a little behind there. How about everything south of the equator in South Africa? <laughs> <laughs> I'm <just honest. laughs> Chad, that's a good guess, Chad, but it's not correct. Uh, Romania from Kelly, no, no. Uh, Benin from Heather, no, no. Steamy Bean, I said Angola first. I said Angola first. <laughs> what did you call it? Uh, <laughs> did you say Angola way back when? If you did, I apologize. I missed it. If I if I missed it, I missed it. I apologize. <laughs> Tammy Ray, Chad, no. Uh, Croatia, Kelly, we got it. We got Croatia. We need African countries, starting with the letter B, C, D, and E. And Tammy Ray, I give up. Tammy Ray, I, I had it with you. You and your darn trivia. <laughs> Cote, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, the, the Ivory Coast. No. Heather, nice try. Uh, P. Massey's going after Ivory Coast. No, that's not it. Botswana. No, that's not it either. No, nope. um, Djibouti, Heather Parsons, Djibouti, two consonants. You got it, Djibouti. That's the D country. I'm looking for the B, the C, and the E. Uh, now I'm going to I'm going to hedge my bets. <laughs> I, I, I'm guessing here too. I know that I'm certain uh, the C country is African. I'm certain of it. Uh, the the uh, the uh, B country. And the E country, it's possible they're part of Asia, but I, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, but everybody gets bonus points for trying anyway. Heather Parsons, Egypt. Nope. Steaming Bean, Beelzebub. Uh, Steaming Bean, are you gonna are you gonna put that one on me later when I tell you the answer to another? And you're gonna say I said it first. Beelzebub. Uh, no. <laughs> Kelly is uh, saying Congo. No, Tammy Ray, I, it, it's giving me a headache. I, I think so hard. Kelly, uh, Cameroon. Yes, Cameroon is a country. That's Africa, isn't it? Isn't Cameroon Africa? Congo, we've got, by the way, P. Uh, more rum, Debbie saying. More rum. Uh, we need a rum ration here. Uh, that's why the sailors needed rum. They couldn't remember all the names of the countries they had to sail to in those old days. All right, there are two countries left. Uh, one country starts with the letter B. It's one word. The E country that starts with the letter E has two words. Uh, and, uh, I'm uh, pretty sure, uh, I thought for sure, uh, both were part of Africa, but if I'm wrong, I, I apologize. Uh, yay, Debbie. <laughs> Where's our rum rations? Uh, Cote d'Ivoire. No, nope, we've had that guest a few times, Kelly, not there. Letter B and the letter E are the last two countries on the worst passports in the world and they just made the list 22 and 23 uh they're accepted in 40 countries uh steaming bean uh, east eastern africa no <laughs> heather has one equatorial guinea uh very well done now is equatorial guinea in africa or is it part of asia am i missing something on equatorial guinea that was a great guess heather uh uh, Tammy Ray's going, there are a lot of countries I haven't heard of. Uh, sea Keeper, where be me grog? Where's me grog? East Timor, the steaming bean is guessing. Scott Batchley, Ethiopia, and your trivia is too hard tonight. It's too hard, I'm telling you. Heather Parsons, Africa, steaming bean in Africa. The last one starts with the letter B. Tell me the nation, a nation that starts with a B. Oh, my God, Heather, good one. <laughs> From Debbie Emanuel. Steaming bean, I miss Africa. I bet you, I bet you, you do. There would have been some pretty neat places that you would have seen. Uh, Benin, Kelly. Uh, Benin is a guess, but it's not the country I'm looking for. Uh, P. Massey's looking. Benin, Pat, uh, Heather Parsons, thanks. One country left on this list. What is the deadbeat country with only 40 countries allowing it to come in with its passport? Boston. Steaming bean saying the country is Boston. <laughs> Not Boston. No, not Boston. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. It ends in the letter I. Starts with the letter B. Ends in the letter I. Bombland. <laughs> Danny Ray is going bombland. <laughs> Bangladesh. It's been guessed already. We've already. It's on the list. Bangladesh is on the list at 24, the one behind it. This country is just ahead of it. Uh, but both countries are uh, only good for 40. The passports are only good for 40 countries for both cases. Burundi. There we go. We got it. Burundi. I think the uh, Burundi is led by a monarch. 
king. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't I, don't I, uh, well, don't we all occasionally see a news story about Burundi whenever the new king takes over? You know, the old king dies of old age and the new king is coming and they have like a $100 million swearing in ceremony for the new king of Burundi, a third world dead broke country and a hundred million to the poorest and feed those people. Got to have it for the king. King's everything. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's, it might be Djibouti, but I think it's Burundi. I could be wrong. Bali. Heather Parsons is saying Bali. <laughs> Gaylene Burundi. <laughs> Laugh out loud. I said Bangladesh twice, steaming bean. Uh, Jim Thomas, yay, booby, good for her. Steaming bean, Elvis was the king. That's true, steaming bean. He really was. He was the king of the world. He was the king of the world. So here's the list of the worst. Uh, Afghanistan, Somalia, Iraq, Pakistan, Eritrea, Nepal, Nepal, Lebanon, Sudan, Syria, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Kosovo, Iran, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Angola, South Sudan, Democratic Republic of the Congo, there's a mouthful, North Korea, Libya, Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, Burundi, Bangladesh. Uh, if your boss calls you up and says, listen, uh, we're going for a contract for, uh, you know, to build a new bridge over this river. And I want you to be the head of the uh, the contract, the head of the project. And he mentions one of these 24. You might not want to do that. <laughs> because they, you, or they might send you over with a suit full, suitcase full of cash to handle the, um, the rough spots, you know, kind of get over some of the rough spots. Cash bribes. Uh, there's a reason they're only... 26 to 40 countries will allow these guys in out of 170 odd countries, 180 odd countries, whatever it is. And Finland, 173. United States, 172 countries. That's a lot of acceptance compared to the others. It's quite amazing. Well, that's our show for today. That's the trivia. I got to give you guys a rest. I know you guys are, are, are dying. That was hard work. Some of your brains are exploding. And Heather Young's telling me I've got 1,497 subscribers. So I'm three away from 1,500. It's fantastic. I was stuck at 1,494 all day today. It just wasn't going anywhere. Looks like three came in. That's fantastic. If anybody's watching this channel right now, if you want to subscribe to this channel, and you should because these all, all these folks have subscribed, there's a button right there. Click it. There's a button right there. Click it. And beside that button, there's a little bell notification icon. Click on that, and you'll get an email every time I do a live stream or a video. You'll be up to speed. It's free. No charge. No obligation. Kind of like you to watch. I mean, we'd, we'd love to have you watch. But hey, we'll, you know, we'll take the subscribers. So $14.97. That's fantastic. We got some thumbs ups today. Thank you again, everybody. I love that. Um, Steaming Bean saying, I grabbed that contract because he's been he's been over there. He grabbed that contract. Uh, off the beaten path. Oh, have you got that right? Um, Nina Frank saying, and the worst of it is all that. The golden passport will soon be in the hands of the uh, Sohols, countries with our uh, <laughs> with our politics. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> uh, Nina, what can I say? Uh, the world is a changing place. Uh, what can I say? Tammy Ray, have an awesome night, everybody. Tammy, thanks for popping in tonight. Nina, thank you for coming. Scott, thanks for coming. Steaming Bean, you too. Kelly, Debbie, Heather, uh, Jim Thomas, Gaylene, uh, C uh, C Lid Keeper. Uh, P. Massey was here tonight. Thank you guys for all being here today. Uh, let's see who else was here today. Uh, uh, let's see any more names I recognize. Uh, any others who were here? Kelly was there. Heather. Oh, my goodness. We got the same folks answering, guessing all those questions. Just a ton of you guys. Love it. Uh, twin. Thanks for the tw uh, twin. Thanks for coming by. Great to have you here. Um, and, uh, oh my gosh, I'm going, I got tons and tons of uh, responses today. I'm going way back. Thank you for everybody for coming by and seeing me today and spending time with both my shows. I'm on tomorrow, uh, five o'clock, uh, Friday night, and I'll be on Saturday at, uh, at two in the afternoon as usual. <clears throat> Look forward to you guys coming by and, uh, uh, have yourselves a great evening. Heather's off on her way. Kathy Butler, say thanks, Kathy. Have a good night. You. You too. Same with you, Debbie. Thanks, you guys. Thanks again for watching tonight. Uh, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me on my live stream today, both my live streams. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, tell your friends. We'd like to have fun here. See you tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. See you Saturday at 2.
We'll catch you next time. Have a great night, everybody. We'll take you guys take care. Bye for now.